near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. Hey, hey, all you minties, Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me for my advanced look at The Avengers Omnibus Volume 1. This is the newest printing from Marvel Comics. So, let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back, everybody. So what we're looking at here is the latest printing of The Avengers Omnibus Volume 1. The Omni that started off all of the team-ups in one superhero book. Because Marvel was like, well, hey, we have all these superheroes and people like when they team up. Let's just make it a team book. So here we are with the Avengers. Now, before I go any further, a big thank you to Debbie Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on July 18th or 19th, depending on where you get your books. And what we're looking at here is the direct market cover, of course, drawn by the legendary Jack Kirby. And on the left-hand side is my original printing, but that is the standard edition cover they're still using. And that is drawn by John Romita Jr. And yes, it is supposed to be an homage to Avengers number one with Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, Wasp, and Ant-Man. And of course, this figure right here of Loki. They have, however, changed the spines. Now, the spine on the direct market cover has that issue of the return of Captain America from number four. And let's look at the backs. Oh, and by the way, I think the standard edition spine should have Thor, Iron Man, Wasp flying around, Giant Man, and Captain America there. Now, as far as the back of the book, here we have both of the books, the backs, the original printing here, and the new printing. It all begins here with Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, Don Heck, and host of Earth's Mightiest Heroes, who, when assembled, become the Avengers. Whereas over here, it says Earth's Mightiest Superheroes in mortal battle with the world's deadliest villains. And collecting Avengers 1 through 30, and down here, uh, ISBN, a little bit smaller than this one. The retail price of the original printing was $100, or I'm sorry, $99.99. The retail price of the new printing is a hundred dollars so has gone up one penny now this being one of those old school omnis it does have that old school marvel masterworks template right there where it looks like a book and then the new printing looking like what they've been doing recently with silver age and bronze age books it's giving you the logo here's the spine again that will be the standard edition spine and then the logo back there now as far as the dust jacket and the flaps, here you have what pretty much makes up the Avengers and a bio on Jack Kirby, Stanley, and Don Heck. It's a little bit different than the flaps of the original printing here. All right, we're going to crack this open and talk about the stories in here, and then we'll do a comparison to the internal artwork of the first printing. And uh, So let's go ahead and start with that. All right, let's go ahead and crack this omnibus open. Here are some black end sheets. And again, the cover to issue number four with the return of this iconic character from the Golden Age and now showing up in the Silver Age. And this actually has more pages than the original printing. And I'll show that here when I do a comparison. This has 776 pages and does collect Avengers 1 through 30. Here are all the credits, Stan Lee, Larry Lieber, Larry Ivey, and then Jack Kirby, Don Heck, and Dick Ayers. Here's all of the inkers and the letters, and unfortunately the colorists at the time were not credited. So here's your table of contents, kicking it off with a forward by Stan Lee from the Marvel Masterworks Avengers Volume 1, and that came out in 1988. So it is really interesting to see how his introductions just kind of morph a little bit, if you will, uh, based on when they came out, like in the 80s and then 90s and then some of the early aughts, and just the things that Stanley remembers. 
And yes, this pretty much tells you exactly why he decided to make an Avengers team book with Jack Kirby. Uh, he thought, man, our fans are writing in and calling and letting us know that they really like when our heroes team up. So why not have a monthly title where our heroes are teaming up? And then they had to decide which characters. You know, Spider-Man's sort of a solo character, uh, but then again, so was the Hulk. So it is interesting that they added the Hulk in here. And, and then, of course, the Fantastic Four were doing their own thing, and the X-Men were already a team. So in at the end of the day, they decided to use Iron Man, they used Thor, Ant-Man, Wasp, and the Incredible Hulk. And that kicks off the very first issue. And of course, the evil being that brings them all together it's none other than loki uh the second issue features this shape-shifting character known as the space phantom uh by the time we get to the third issue you have namor coming back uh, he had already appeared in the pages of the fantastic four but this time around he is fighting off against the avengers and this is when uh the hulk is still a big part of the team now the big game changer and the one that means a lot to me because i remember Oh my gosh, I must have read this issue so many times. I had a reprint, and at the time when I was a kid, I was like 11 or 12, I thought it was an original printing, and I was like, oh my gosh, this this comic book's going to be worth so much money. But all I had to do was look at the ads in the back and see that they were 80s ads. But this was a reprint that I had of The Return of Captain America. And in here, yes, yeah, it was written that this is considered a retcon, where they go back and retouch up some of the past history of a character and make it seem like oh this was always the plan that he was frozen in ice and then the avengers dethaw him and i thought it was really cool i thought this was some really good sci-fi writing when it comes to like the origin of medusa if you will so i enjoy the story it means a lot to me and it is the return of captain america who you cannot not think of when you think of the avengers uh, here's the invasion of the Lava Man in issue number five. It pretty much picks up from Fantastic Four number 26. Uh, issue number six is the Masters of Evil. So we have the character of Baron Zemo. And he just come, comes out of South America and recruits the Melter, the Black Knight, and the Radioactive Man to take on the Avengers. And let's see here. We have issue... I can't go over each issue, but it's just so much fun to do this. This is the Darkest Hour story, where pretty much the Avengers suspend Iron Man uh, from the Avengers, and then you have the Enchantress and the Executioner teaming up with Baron Zemo uh, to fight the Avengers. And of course, those are characters from the pages of Thor. Kang the Conqueror, my favorite Avengers villain. This is where he pretty much just starts off and lets you know what kind of character he is. He's a time traveler and he sends the Avengers into a different timeline. And then you have the coming of Wonder Man with issue number nine. Uh, issue number 10 has the Avengers breaking up, but it also, the re uh, this character of Immortus, and then later on, of course, they said, wait, Immortus and Kang. Yeah, all these characters are the same type of character. It's the same character. But the big thing in here is... My daughters and I immediately recognized that it was Thor that first said, Avengers Assemble. Oh, really interesting. Spider-Man shows up in issue 11. Here's an introduction from Stan Lee. And again, you have more artwork by Don Heck. Now, actually taking over the book primarily. Let's just skip a few issues through here. Because there's a lot of stuff in here. It makes it a lot of fun. I love when they introduce new characters. There's a certain beauty to these silver age stories and i know they're not for everybody uh this is the captain america and rick jones team up even though rick jones feels like wait i'm the hulk's friend i can't be teaming up with captain america too bad because he does and then you have jack kirby coming back for the next issue and that's the one where they pretty much change everything in issue number 16 it was unheard of at the time actually let's go back to it. so in this issue you have Captain America forming up a new team of Avengers. So by the end of the issue, he is announcing the new Avengers, and it is himself as the leader, Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, and Hawkeye. Those three other characters were villains to begin with, and now they are Avengers. So unheard of for all kinds of reasons, right? I think a lot of people during the time called them Captain America's kooky or Cookie Quarket, I think is what they were called. Uh, they end up trying to find the Hulk, and 
yeah, it's that type of stories that you didn't know what to expect. The Coming of the Swordman uh, shows up later on. And actually, there's another introduction by Stan Lee. So it's like uh, the they pretty much put three masterworks together to put this particular omnibus together. Uh, there is death. There's betrayal through these issues. There's Power Man right there. Uh, one of my favorite stories is Once an Avenger and From the Ashes of the Feet. Those are issues, is it 24 and 25? No, 25 is uh, the Doctor Doom story. But it is 23 and 24. Those are some of my favorite issues from here. And of course, featuring Kang the Conqueror. As I mentioned, Doom playing a part in issue number 25 right there. Wasp comes back to the team. Uh, this is the Atuma fight right there. And this is four against the Flood Tide storyline from issue number 27. Where the Wasp goes missing and then... She might end up saving the day. Letter pages intact. And this takes us all the way to issue number 30. It's at the Frenzy in a Far Off Land, I think. Yes, it is. Issue number 30. The Avengers, both the mutant characters of Scarlet Witch and her brother, Quicksilver, pretty much take time off um, to, to recharge their powers, if you will. And then it takes Goliath to South America. We have Black Widow introduced through these pages, looking a little bit different than you probably have come to know her. Again, letter pages all intact. Now, as far as the extras, we do have from the Son of Origin Marvel Comics, an introduction by Stan Lee. You have the house ads in here. Uh, you do have some original pages. There we go. And original covers. That's so killer. Love it. And more of original covers, early designs for Swordman there, or Swordsman. I always liked that character, even with the whole Katadi thing. Uh, reprints right here. It might have been some of this that I had as a reprint of my first, or Avengers number four. The essential covers right here. Even the back covers. Fantastic First covers. This is a Wizard Ace edition of Avengers number one. Some Avengers classics, one and two, and three and four. All these covers done by the phenomenal Arthur Adams. It's a big noggin on my boy Kang there. That, I believe, is the cover they're using for the Wonder Man omnibus, the standard edition. Yeah, Arthur Adams is one of my favorite artists. The Marvel Masterworks Avengers. These are the trade paperbacks that were recolored. And Alex Ross take on Avengers number one. This was not included in the first omnibus because this came out in 2016. The Mighty Marvel Masterworks Avengers number one, the 1963 omnibus cover, and then the standard edition cover in case you have the direct market. All right, let's do a comparison. But first I wanted to, yeah, let's do a comparison to the original printing and look at the back matter first. All right, we have the original printing here and the new printing. And I'm sure one thing everybody noticed when I was checking out uh, the books here is that this is a little bit thicker than the new printing. And this one here has less pages, though, and that is due to the build and the paper stock that they're using. This one is printed at the Donley printer and the new printing printed at the iMac printer. So actually, let's just go ahead and compare some of yeah right here i think this would be good we have white pages here so we can see some of the bleed through so colors looking a little actually they're looking a little bit duller here in the original printing than they are in the new printing they kind of pop out here um still some bleed through over here not as much so over here but it is still in the original printing now that because it's all white actually let's see Let's just go to the main story and see what we can find. All right, here we go. So you do have some of the caption boxes coming in from the other side and also some frames. You have a little bit over here. Not as much as you do over here. The colors are a little bit darker over here. Like I said, this is actually closer to that of the books when they came out wanted to look at some of the lighter colors like the blues here so yeah you can see a frame from the other's page kind of bleeding through here and over here not so much but it is there and again this stuff 
doesn't bother everybody, right? It, but it does bother some people, and I want to be as thorough as I can be with my overviews. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit over here, and not so much over here. But definitely the colors, I think, are an improvement on this omnibus. They're a little bit lighter, whereas these just seem like this is too peach and too pink for the skin tones that they're using. And that's probably due to the fact that they've used... Yeah, that is way too pink for Thor. Um... Probably due to the fact that they've used the new Masters for this particular edition. So, then that all comes from the Marvel Masterworks, where they retouched up, where Corey and his team have reached up, retouched up the artwork and the colors, and yeah, it's a little bit more muddled than it is over here. So, this is truer to the way that it originally came out, and this has a little... I don't want to say modernization colors, but the color separation, you can tell a little bit more, is here than over here. Now, as far as the extras, as I mentioned, they both end with issue number 30. Here's the letter pages. Just kind of showcasing what it looks like there. Now, as far as the way the books lay over, though, the uh, this original printing has a little bit of a tighter bind than this. I think, honestly, this lays over just as good as this original printing. Again, the big issue is probably the bleed-through. Now, we are at the extras, so you're going to see some of the pictures flipped around uh, you're going to see some of the house hats not being used over here and i could have sworn that there was yes right here there's this if you can't be them join them from stan lee it's it's the introduction whereas this one doesn't have it that goes straight into the house ads so just a little bit of a difference what's added in here some original artwork again so this has about 30 more pages of material and it's mainly the extras there's a lot more it seems like original artwork and the way that these are reprinted in this book over here the marvel superheroes there we go let's take a look together yeah it's like they found some more stuff like t-shirts and there's the marvel tells these are done in splash pages. Not, not all of them, of course, but some of these are done in splash pages, and then you do have some thumbnails. Whereas over here, they're just collected in thumbnail. Even the essentials collected in thumbnail. Whereas over here, the essentials are given a full splash page. The Arthur Adams reprints are done in thumbnails. There's the Marvel Masterworks. And I believe... Yeah, that's it. Hmm. Whereas over here, you have a lot more stuff that they found over the years. So, yeah, this is um, this has a lot more material, and it's mainly the extras. And I, as I said, they're using the new masters from the Marvel Masterworks on the artwork itself. Let's just do a little comparison again. Mainly the skin tones. You can tell the difference right away. How much lighter these are than these over here, which have a really peachy color to them or pink at times and yeah they stand out because the art has been cleaned up and again the paper stock the only printer being thicker than the iMac printer but that's it that as they say is that if you're interested in purchasing this omnibus don't forget to check out our sponsors if you're in europe and you're interested in buying these books definitely check out walt's comic shop in berlin germany they have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. That was the content, the page count, and build 
of this new printing and of course the comparison to the original printing in the comments down below let me know if you missed out on this particular omnibus and you are picking it up this time around which cover you're going to get and if you've read the stories in here what you think about the avengers how it just it, it does it match up to the expectations that a lot of people have of the silver age or do you think it's as good as the steve ditko and Stan Lee, Spider-Man, or Doctor Strange, or Jack Kirby, and Stan Lee, Fantastic Four, or X-Men. I would love to know all those comments down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Avengers Assemble, baby.